go all the way. Hallelujah. All right. Welcome, everybody, to our Wednesday midweek series to, um, service. It's a blessing and a privilege to be here. We're going to begin and start by having a short time of prayer. All right. All right. And Psalm 100, verse 4 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Amen. So I want us to just begin just by giving thanks unto the Lord. Lift up your voice and pray and just thank the Lord. Thank him. Thank him right now. Yes, Lord, we thank you as we are here, oh, Father. It is by your great grace and your mercy that we are even here, oh, Father. And we give thanks unto you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we have another opportunity to be in your presence, Lord. Another opportunity to worship you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have covered us throughout this day, Lord, and that you have kept us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for it is nothing of our doing, but it is all because of you, Lord. And we give you thanks for it right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For there is none like you, Lord. For you deserve to be exalted. For you deserve to be worshipped, Lord. Yes, and we give thanks unto you, O oh Father, as we are here tonight, Lord. For you are wonderful, Lord. For you are awesome, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. And we give thanks unto you, Lord. We thank you as we are here. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We come to you tonight, Lord, with a grateful heart, with a grateful heart of worship towards you, O oh Father. Be thou exalted, Lord, as we give thanks unto you, Lord. We bless your holy name right now as we are here, Lord. We bless it with thanksgiving right now as we are here, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Masa makabara bosa mataba. Siki matabara basa mataba. Yes, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and give thanks unto the Lord. Thank him. Thank him for he is good. Thank him for he has brought you this far. Thank him that he has protected you and preserves you throughout the day. Give him thanks right now. Give him thanks right now. For there is none like you, Lord. For you are awesome, Lord. For you are glorious, Lord. And we give you all the admiration right now as we are here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. For there is none like you, Lord. Hallelujah be unto your wonderful name. Hallelujah be unto your wonderful name right now, Lord, as we give you thanks. Yes, thank you, Lord. Amen. Next, I want us to take this opportunity to pray concerning our sins. You know, as it says in Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So none of us are perfect. And none of us are always doing something right by God. So we need to take this opportunity to confess our sins right now. For he is faithful and just to forgive us for every sin, every transgression that we commit against him. So I want you to just lift up your voice and pray. And pray concerning your sins. Confess. Don't walk in deception and hide your sins now. Confess and talk to the Lord about your sins and ask him to forgive. Lift up your voice of prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray, oh, Father. We pray, Lord, that you forgive, Lord. Forgive every sin, oh, Father. Yes, forgive every sin, Lord, as we confess to you right now. Father, for we know we are perfect. For we know we have done wrong right now, Lord. Yes, we don't walk in any deception. We don't deceive ourselves right now. We take this opportunity to confess, Lord. Confess every sin that we've committed against you, Lord. May you forgive us once again, Lord. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, as we are here. Forgive every sin, O Father. Wash us. 
Wash us once again in your precious blood, O Father. For we know better and still have sin, Lord. We have fallen short of your glory, Lord. So as we confess right now, may you forgive, O Lord. May you forgive every sin, Lord. Every sin that we've committed against you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Forgive, O Lord. Forgive, O Lord. Forgive your children, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for every sin, Lord, as we confess right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we thank you. For we believe that tonight as we thank you, Lord, and that we've asked for forgiveness of sin. You have heard our prayers. You have heard our cries on out to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. All right. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome Sister Sylvia to lead us tonight in our praise and worship.
Amen. Amen. We serve a great and a mighty God. Hallelujah. And everything about our Creator is great. Amen. He has been great and He is continually great in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, we want to take our offerings. Hallelujah. Amen. When I say offering time, say blessing time. Hallelujah. Offering time. Blessing. Amen. It's time for us to receive our blessing. Amen. Can you please give. Amen. You can give by following the prompts that is going to be given to us shortly. Amen. You can text it to LCI. And also, you can give by PayPal. And also, you can give by sending a check if you're more comfortable with that. Amen. All right. As we take our offerings, you can please lift up your gadgets as we give. Father, we pray that you, Jesus, that you bless this offering. May it go to the furtherance of your gospel, of God. We pray that we'll be able to give more to your house, oh God. We say we should bring to your store, oh God. And that you rebuke the virus for our sake, oh God. We pray that as we give, oh God, you rebuke the virus in our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray for Thanksgiving. Amen. 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 I want 
for this offering in the name of Jesus Christ. Be glorified, be thou exalted. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Right. Good evening. We are welcome to the service tonight. Amen. And on this coming Sunday is um, Palm Sunday. Amen. <laughs> Second Palm Sunday under COVID. Anyway, but we'll be on the Zoom and we're going to have a good time. Amen. And then the Easter Sunday we are going to be getting back to church, amen? Not everybody, but we're just going to try to gradually go back, amen? And I'm going to post something up on the line, what Apostle wanted us to do. Uh, I'm going to post on the main church line, amen? Um, no, no, no children's service and no caretaking thing, amen? It's going to affect us somehow, but it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll try and plan it somehow. Say no children under nine, for a shock. So we just have to rearrange ourselves. Um, but um, the rest of the things is that they, uh, maintaining social distance, sanitizing, keeping masks on always. We'll still have the Zoom stream uh, for those who cannot be there. And then uh, we sound tracks as much as possible. No hugging, <laughs> no physical contact. And then we'll have some extra masks at the door. And then people from same households can sit together just like we had um, at some TV's thing. And then uh, well, we don't have windows, so we can't keep any windows open. Those who have windows, we keep their windows open. And then those, um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. All right? So I believe it's going to work out well. Amen. Just a gradual reopening. God has been good to us and has kept us safe. Amen. All right? I don't hear you. All right. All right. We're, we're all right. together. One of these days, everything's going to get well and better. Amen. Amen. After service... I'm going to post something, especially on church workers site. You know, somebody told me that he has some. Uh, okay, I'll, I'm going to post it on the on the on the WhatsApp for you all to see. Amen. The church workers website. Uh, uh, WhatsApp first. All right. So look out. I'll put something there after share this. Amen. But for now, I want us to sing um, a classic Easter song uh, as we get in the Easter mood, and then we'll watch uh, preaching from our pastor Bishop Dag. Amen. The, an Easter hymn that we want us to sing. When I survey the wondrous cross, amen. We already amen. started, amen, hallelujah. Every day is Christmas and every day is Easter. But I want us to sing this powerful Easter song and then we will have a powerful preaching from our prophet, amen, hallelujah. All right, bring that for us, amen. No, the hymn, please. The one the all time classic.
Amen. I want you to just, just for a moment, just lift up your hand and just thank God for the cross. Amen. That's the story of Easter. Just give him thanks right now. Somebody lift your hand up and just say, thank you, Father, for sending your son to die on the cross for us. Amen. The Bible says, whilst we were yet sinners, God sent forth his son, Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus died for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just, boys, up and just say, thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for his salvation. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. Hallelujah. Father, we take a moment to say thank you for thank our redemption. Thank you thank for the that, cross, Father. Thank you for the redemption of the cross. Father, bless your holy name, Father, for the cross. We thank you, Father, for the cross. That he no sin because sin that we sacrifice. will become the righteous God. Bless your holy name. Bless we thank you, Father, for saving us, for saving us from hell and damnation. We are grateful. And we will be reminded, brain, oh Lord, this Easter time, and we'll be saying thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Hallelujah, Amen. Now amen. We pray with us for the rest of the service, be glorified. Amen, 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 amen. 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 And then one more announcement before we proceed on Easter Friday, which is the Good Friday, which is the second of April. Just. Tomorrow's no two days from now, week we'll be for, we'll be we'll be we'll be having a an East Good Friday church service with our prophet. Amen. It's going to be Amen. held at an Akazu campus in Mampong. Um, it's going to be our morning. <laughs> it's going to be at two p.m. in Ghana. That's going to be about our two p.m. is fourteen hours, so our seven a.m. Amen. So have an early service with them. Amen. Hallelujah. On Easter Friday morning. Amen. So I want you to prepare. We can be there, but we'll be on the Zoom, on the work on Facebook, and we'll flow with them. Amen. And it's going to be a very powerful time. Um, last time we we're seeing some of the miracles that we had had, had uh, from last, I think last last year's school, or last two years, uh, Easter uh, Good Friday service. Amen. The power of God is present. And I believe the power of God is going to be present again with us. Amen. So we'll invite our friends and family. We'll be together in the morning with Prophet. Amen. And in the evening, we will have our local Good Friday service. Amen. It's going to be very powerful. God is with us and we are blessed. Amen. All right. Good. So tonight, I'm not preaching like I've not been doing on the Wednesday nights. We're going to leave, listen to a powerful sermon from our Prophet. Um, it's entitled, how blessed people become blessed. Amen. How blessed people become blessed. How blessed people become blessed. I want you just to tune in and flow with it. Don't do anything. Don't go swimming. <laughs> Don't go hiking. Just flow with it. Amen. And see what God is going to do for you. I've experienced during this COVID season that the anointing is not limited by the lack of physical interaction or physical presence. The anointing still is transmitted even by the internet. Amen. And I believe that tonight as we watch this service, God is going to bless you. And as you receive the message of God from Bishop Dad, you are going to have a, an impartation and a divine impact. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want you with a clap offering, welcome the ministry of Bishop Dad Ward Mills tonight. Amen. Don't tune off. Don't go to sleep. Don't go cooking and don't go jogging. Let's tune in right now with a clap offering unto God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Lord, all that's good and perfect come from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Oh, for all. You're the center of my joy. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. 
have lost my direction. You're the compass for my way. You are the music in the middle when the street. Oh, you hear the voices of my children in my family and my home. You are the source and the finisher of my highest dream. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Lord, all that's good and perfect come from you. And you're the heart of my contentment oh for all i do jesus you're the center of my joy and you are why i find pleasure in the simple things in life you are the music in the meadows and the streets You are the laughter that shadows all my fears. When I'm down and out, your hand is there to hold. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And all that's good and perfect. the center of my joy. Tonight my message is entitled How Blessed People Became Blessed. How Blessed People Became Blessed. The first person I want us to look at is Abraham. How Abraham Became Blessed. Now the Lord, Genesis 12, verse 1, the Lord had said to Abram, get thee out of thy country and for, from thy kindred and from thy father's house. Amen. Into a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Amen. And I'll bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And in Genesis 26, when God was speaking to Isaac, he made reference to what Abraham did that made him bless Abraham. In Genesis 26, verse 4, he says, I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because that Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, and my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Amen. So the first example of a blessed person who became blessed uh, is Abraham. And the first way by which Abraham, the, the way which Abraham became a blessed person was by obedience. Amen. Amen. He didn't have principles of uh, economics, investments, and uh, what have you. All the other principles that exist. He, he did not become rich to the principles of Bill Gates or the principles of the millionaire next door or the principles of the millionaire's kit or the principles of the financial times or financial gurus leadership 101 
Management 101 and other key principles that are being used today to generate wealth and success. Abraham had one key. I say, how blessed people became blessed. And how did Abraham become blessed above all the nations of the earth? How did he have such a great name? How did he become what he, we know him to become? The father of faith. And there's an Abraham in every country in the world. Thousands of Abrahams in the world. I can even think of some Abrahams I know. Can yes. anybody think of an Abraham that you know? Yes. He said, I will make your name great. It's been thousands of years, but people are still naming their children Abraham. Mm. Isn't that fantastic? It's fantastic. I'll, your name, I'll multiply you, your seed. All nations of the earth will be blessed in you. Most of our ministries are not able to even cross the road. Mm affect the community. You cannot say that your ministry is affecting just the community. But he was a blessing to all nations. Mm. There are some ministers of the gospel who are blessings to their community. Some are blessings to their city. They are Accra ministers. Some are blessings to the big cities of, the, of a country like Accra, Kumasi, Takradi. But there are some people that are blessings to the whole nation. And wow. some people that are blessings to West Africa, do you get it? And some people are blessing to Africa. Or some people are blessing to Sub-Saharan Africa. But some people are blessing to all of Africa. Amen. And some people are blessing intercontinental blessings. Mm. Different continents. We have what we call international fathers who are mm. blessings to all continents, all over the earth. They are blessing. Their names are known. So it's not a small thing to grow from being a community blessing <laughs> being a, 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 this, a, a regional blessing, to be a citywide blessing, a metropolitan blessing, to be a, a, a city blessing, to be a big city blessing, to be or an intercity blessing, to be a national blessing, to be a sub-regional blessing, to be a continental blessing, and to be an intercontinental blessing where you are affecting the islands and other smaller communities. But the Bible says to Abraham, indeed, all nations, all families of the earth shall be blessed. How did he become such a blessing? His major key was a key of what? Multiplication, isn't it? Key of investment, isn't it? Key of what? Education. University education, PhD, masters. No, his key to his blessing was obedience. He obeyed the Lord. So could it be that you too, without all this education and without all this and without all that, you could be blessed through obeying? Yes. Is it possible that you could have great blessings in your life through obedience? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm sharing. How blessed people became blessed. Mm -hmm. It's just like somebody wrote a book, How Rich Nations Became Rich and Why Poor Countries Stay Poor. You get it. So when you study how rich nations became poor, they all, how rich nations became rich, they all became rich in the same way. Mm. And they became rich through industrialization. <laughs> you get it? And so many other things like that. All right. The next powerful, rich, successful person in the Bible is Isaac. What were the keys of Isaac? How blessed people became blessed? And the next key is found in Isaiah, uh, Genesis chapter 26, verse 1. There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Go not down to Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Abraham, he told him to go. Isaac, he told him, go not. Sojourn in this very land. Stay here. And I will be with thee, and I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham. And I will make thy seed to multiply. Verse 6. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Mm. So what was his key? What was the key of Isaac? What made him blessed? Was it investment? 
Was it traveling? Some people feel I must travel abroad. In his case, he did not travel. In Abraham's case, he traveled. Mm. In his case, he did not travel. In Isaac's case, he did not travel. In Isaac's case, he made a bad investment. <laughs> the Bible says he sowed in the land where there bad. was a famine, where there was no rain. He made a bad investment because God told him, make a bad investment. Yes. Make a foolish investment now. <laughs> and he made a foolish investment. And the Lord blessed him and he became rich and great. Verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of heads and a great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. In the American Bible, American Bible, it says, for he had, the verse before, 13, it says, and the man became rich. And continued to grow richer mm. until he became very wealthy. Wow. Richer. Richer. That shall be your story. <laughs> but how did it become Isaac's story? How did it become his story? He became rich and continued to grow richer until he became very wealthy. By <laughs> obeying God. Obey what God told him to do. Mm, and God it. told him, make a bad investment. Mm. Don't travel as your father traveled. Stay in one place. Sow here where there is no rain. Mm. And there will be no rain to water your seeds. That's how he became rich. He became rich by verse 12. God started to speak to him by verse 1. By verse 12, he became rich. And then... He continued to grow richer within verse 13 until he became very wealthy by the end of verse 13. 13 verses later, he was very wealthy. Hey. Hey. In 13 verses, you shall be wealthy in Jesus' name. Hey. Recently, I entered an aeroplane hmm. and I realized that there was seat number one, A, B, C, D, E, F, two, A, B, C, D, E, F, three, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, four, A, B, C, D, E, F, five, A, B, C, D, E, F, six, A, B, C, D, E, F, seven, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, eight, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, ten, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, eleven, A, B, C, D, E, F, I, I, G, H, I, J, K, 12, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. And then 14, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. There was no number 13 in the Lolo plane. Hey, there no, was right. no number 13. Mm. Because they consider it an unlucky number to be sitting on. Hey. But mm. in verse 13 over here, hey. Uh, hey. in verse 13... Are you listening to me? In verse 13, he became rich. By the middle of verse 13, he continued to grow richer. Grow richer. And then by the end of verse 13, he became very wealthy. Very wealthy. Hey. So you see, it is not by eliminating verse 13. <laughs> you, you're going in a lift. Floor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14. There's no floor number 13. So it's not by good luck or bad luck. But his key was obedience. So once again, a key that made Isaac a very successful and rich person was obedience. Same yes. key. How blessed people became blessed. Look at uh, Germany. How did Germany become rich? And then they followed. Look at England. How did England become rich? Now, we are not learning. We are not a nation. If anybody wants to learn how Germany became rich, I suggest to the NDC government that they should study how Germany became rich. 
and learn from it. I suggest to NDC government and I suggest to any future NPP government. <laughs> study how rich countries became rich and follow it. Because mm. all the rich countries became rich in exactly the same way. So I suggest to all governments to study. But I suggest to all Christians that if you want to be blessed the way some of these guys in the Bible were blessed, I suggest that you study how they became blessed. And you are going to find out that blessed people became blessed by doing particular things. And you'll mm. find out that all blessed people did exactly the same thing to become blessed. Mm. Just like all rich nations did exactly the same thing to become rich, all blessed people did exactly the same thing to become blessed. And the key is obedience. Isaac was obedient when it did not make sense. When he could not see why. Christians who do not pay tithes, tithes, you can see straight away that they do not fear God and they do not believe that God sees what they are doing, and that God is really the one who blesses. That's why Christians eat their tithes. Hey, sh that one. one day, a certain preacher arrived in a certain country. And he was picked up at the airport by one of the brothers in the church who was helping. As they were going, he asked the brother, what is your name? He said, my name is Jack Toronto. And he said, where are you, you know, what do you do in the church and so on. As they were going on, he just decided to ask. He said, so brother, do you pay your tithes? And this brother smiled and said, sometimes. And the preacher said, what? Sometimes? Then he said, please stop the car now. Mm. And the, the driver, the gentleman, one of the business, said, why? Why should I stop? He said, will you please stop the car now? I, I need to get down now. I Can you give me the number of the pastor? I am afraid to sit in this car. A car of somebody who does not pay tight. In case the canker worm is coming on this journey or the palma worm is coming to meet us on the way, you can easily have an accident. He told him, look, you can easily have an accident. Somebody who doesn't pay tight. I, I cannot be in your car. And he got out of the car. Mm. Hey. You see, people do not fear God. One day, some Christians were angry with their pastor. So they, they went to buy tear gas. Do you know tear gas? They brought it to the church. They were waiting for the communion time. So that during the communion time, they will release the tear gas. I don't know what, who, how they were planning to fight the pastor and the church with the tear gas, a group in the church. So there was a big confusion in the church. I mean, the police had to come to separate them. You know, when I heard this story, I realized that, look, people do not fear God. And as long as why we pray, when we are praying for the Spirit of God, we pray for the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. Because we don't fear God and we don't believe that God is the one who blesses. And that's why we don't fear his servants as well. One day, a certain pastor took an offering. After they had received the offering, one of the other brothers came to hold the basket. And he said, mm. it is mine. Hey, hey. And then the pastor said, no, it is mine. The basket belongs to the Lord. Not people dividing the basket into two. So listen to me, my dear friend. Then you, must, you must believe that it is God who blesses. Amen. And you must, you must fear him. Amen. Jacob. Jacob, his name is Israel. How did Jacob get blessed? How did Jacob get blessed? Verse 1. 
Genesis 28. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him. Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Mm. Arise. Go to Padan Aram. Padan Aram. To the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father. And take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people and mm. give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob and went to Padan Aram and to Laban, son of Bethuel the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob and Esau's mother. And when Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padan Aram to take him a wife from thence, that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Padan Aram. And Esau, seeing the daughters of Canaan, pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he ha had Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajoth, to be his wife. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. Esau went and collected the wife exactly of the place that his father said he should not. Tell your neighbor, look at somebody. Look at somebody. Now, you will not in the Bible see the same kind of blessing being given to Jacob as was given to Abraham and Isaac by God directly. God does not bless Jacob in the same way. But his father blesses him. His, his earthly biological father blesses him. Mm. Yes. And he becomes blessed not by hearing directly from God that God is blessing him, but by hear, having his father's blessing upon his life. And by obeying his father. And his father, you know, fathers have strange instructions. <laughs> Only one. Is there nothing else I should do in this whole world that I should go and collect a wife from that particular? What modern day Christian would have said, but uh, what about if I don't go there and I don't see any beautiful, beautiful girls there? I've seen some beautiful girls in this area. I mean, Daddy, you see, in your, your time, your time, we used to do such things. But in our time, we don't marry by arrangements. In our time, when you fall in love with somebody that you see in school, then you can do that. But in, your, in our time, it's different. Is there not always a reason to find some other thing to do? Recently, I was in a certain country, and I was with a pastor. And then the day before, I, I just told the pastor, I said, do this. Only one thing, which has nothing to do with the church, per se. It has something to do with the church, but it's not really shepherding work, do this, visit people, pray, fast, this, nothing. I just said, do this. So, the night, in the night, I thought about it. And I thought to myself that, is there nothing else that I want to tell? And I thought to myself, there is nothing else that I have to say to him. Only do one particular thing. So, the next day, he asked me, so, Bishop, is there anything that you think that, I said, do you remember what I told you yesterday? That's the only thing that's important for you to do. That's the only thing, nothing else is important in this place that you are. I know why I'm telling you that. There is nothing important here except what I'm telling you. Do this only. And all the pastors and the missionaries that have followed that instruction, they are the most successful missionaries and pastors. Or they are the successful ones. Those who have only that thing. And you see Jacob, he's just telling the only marry from here. That's all. Just marry from here. This is the only advice I can give. Marry one of these ones. Ah! But I want somebody with big bottoms. And there are no big bottoms there. You are a stupid fool. You get it? You are a stupid fool. That's all I can say about you. 
is that your mind is working in the form of rebellion. It's true. How blessed people became blessed. The next blessed person we are looking at is David. How did David become blessed? First Kings chapter 15, verse 3. And he walked in all the sins of his father which he had done before him, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord. He's talking about somebody. Nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem. Verse 5. Because David, you see, did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. <laughs> hey. This is a very important verse for you to remember all the days of your life. Many people see David as somebody who when they commit adultery and all that, but you see, when even you make a mistake, God recognizes all the good things that you've done. And he realized that it is in this matter that you didn't do well. But in all these other areas, you did well. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. David obeyed God in all areas except in this particular area. And that earned David a blessing. And God described him in Acts 13. He says, And when he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, concerning whom he testified, saying, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. David, Bible says, he died full of aid, riches, and honor. He was blessed. And God blessed him and said, You will always, always, always have somebody sitting on the throne. And Jesus Christ comes from the tribe of Judah. Judah was the fourth born. You don't even understand why. He was the fourth son of uh, Jacob. He had Reuben, Simeon, Levi. Then I think he had Judah. And all the blessing, he, he, he didn't bless the firstborn with anything he told him, you're not going to do well. You know, you're not going to do well. You are the firstborn, but you're not going to do well. And he gave him the reasons. But he didn't, he didn't replace him with the secondborn, as has been happening with Jacob and Esau and many of the twins in the Bible. The second was put first. Didn't happen with the second. Didn't happen to the third. Even Joseph, you know, who should have been, you know, the star, he just said, you know, you survived the archers, the bulls were thrown at you, and you were distinguished among your brethren. But he, said, but he said to Judah, Judah, he said that the scepter shall not depart from you. Judah is the one who suggested that they should sell Joseph. But you see, divinely, God chose him. He said, you. It was Judah who saw the camels and said, look, there are some camels passing by. Let's send them. Judah was the one whom the scepter, the rulership, governorship will not depart from you. And Jesus is called the lion of the tribe of Judah. Are you there? And through that descent,
Okay. So Brother Robert's going to fix it for us. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're talking about how blessed people became blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, so as Prophet was saying, you have to learn from the example that you see before you, what is written in the Bible. Amen. There's so many blessed people in the Bible. And we don't have to go far to learn from other people. Amen. That's a great example that we have. We learned about Abraham, um, how Abraham came from A of the Chaldee and Chaldees. And the main thing there is just obedience, obedience, obedience. Amen. Is it ready? That's right. Okay. Play it then. Then Amen. came the tribe of Judah and came David. And until Jesus, through the Old Testament and the Torah, sometimes when you witness to Jews and you explain all these things, they themselves turn to the Lord. But when you show them from their book how Jesus Christ came and where he came from, you get it. It's surprising. It's very wonderful. Even Judah, he went and slept with some prostitutes and gave birth. That one was also included. And it is in the Old Testament. You know that story of um, Onanism. Mm. His, his son married and then he died. He had three sons. <laughs> then the second one married her. And then oh, that was Onan. And then he died. So the third one was afraid to marry because a woman that when they marry you not, then you die. Even Judah was supposed to take over and he was also afraid. The Bible says he was afraid that he would also die when he marries her. <laughs> you see, these type of traditions and superstitions, they are not new. Yeah. <laughs> it's from Bible days. People are afraid of certain things. <laughs> are you listening to me? Yeah. Anyway, so David, David, he says, a man who will do my will. How did David get blessed? Through investment? Through obedience. Wow. Tell somebody I've decided to be obedient. Amen. Amen. The next one. The Jews. How did the Jews become blessed? If the average income of an American is equivalent of to a hundred units, the poorest communities in America earn about 60, 62 units. And then the Germans, Japanese, and so on, the Japanese rank second, and they are about 132. But the richest and the highest earning group within America, ethnic group within America, are the Jews, earning about 179 units. When the average American earns 100 units. So the Jews are specially blessed and unique in the world and in the nation, in the nations of the world. And this is one of the reasons for hatred. Hatred is a direct byproduct of success. Now it shall come to pass in Deuteronomy 28. God told them. That if thou hearken diligently the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Huh. As you can see, I just told you, above all nations of the earth. Within America, they are above all the other nations. Germans, Japanese, local Americans, Hispanics, blacks, Ghanaians, Africans, Nigerians. Oh. They are above all the nations of the earth. Not that I'm saying, no, these are just statistical facts. And, and I've written a book, I'm going to put all that data in it. You can, you can check it up and, re and re reference it for yourself. You find out it's, it's a fact. Why they, why they are rich. So people have even written books as to why Jews are rich. And Jews have written that we are rich because we do this. Because, and the first thing that they write in their books is that we give. We give. So we, we give even though it's not rational. We give. Because we have been taught over and over with stories and stories and stories from the Bible that it is good to give. When you give, you'll be blessed. Wow. 
The Lord will set thee on high and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Amen. So all these are four powerful examples of, or the five powerful examples of people who became blessed. And I can go on and on and on and on. But I think five is enough. I have more, but five is enough for tonight. Is that not so? It's not about getting more examples. It's about obeying yourself today. You have a thousand examples, right? If you don't obey, it has no benefit to you. <laughs> Amen. Come to your feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right, 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 right. Lift your hands. Pray. Listen. How many, we put down, how many of you pay tight sometimes? No, just be honest. That one too, you know, you know, obey. Yeah, lift your hand. Many of us pay tight sometimes. Lift. So, you see, change it. You get what I'm saying? Change it now. Because you have to fear God. Pay, pay tight for years and years. I've been paying tight for 30 years. You must fear, you must fear God. You must fear to disobey God. You must believe that if God says do this, you have to do it, otherwise you will die. Until that mind is in you, you, you never really start obeying. The fear that you will die must be in you. I will die when I don't obey. Amen. And you must do things because it is obedience. Even marriage. I married my wife because I obeyed God. But these days, people marry. I've just seen a beautiful girl. So she's in church, number one. She went to Legon, number two. She's a shepherd, number three. She reads the books, number four. Bishop, she loves your books and she loves your tapes. Number five, she's a what? She's a healing Jesus partner. Number six, Bishop Saki knows her. Number seven, I mean, these are the credentials that people use to take decisions. She wants to go on missions. Number nine. Dr. Go, is it not true? Instead of praying and waiting on the Lord, she sometimes helps with the first lady's office. And then the last one, so oh, she's beautiful. And, and they'll say, Bishop, you just tell me what to do, I'll do it. Am I God? Am I God? Am I the one going to marry the person? How can I know? People ask me, Bishop, I've seen her sister. She's called Hilderelda. Hilderelda, and so what? What can I do about her? I don't know her. Why don't you pray? Why don't you pray? Do you know what is waiting for you in the future? Huh? But people don't pray. People don't wait on the Lord. If the Lord was to tell you not to marry, you would still marry. Say, Lord, I didn't hear it well. And if the Lord was to tell you marry, you will not marry. You see, we don't do things in response to God's will. We do things for every other reason apart from this is what God says. But I tell you, if you want blessings to come into your life, begin to do things because God says you should do them. Amen. And I believe a new level of blessing is going to come. You know, sometimes people come and say, Bishop, I want to, uh, uh, I want to work in the ministry. Look, I often do not like to receive people to work in the ministry when they are just doing it because that's the next opportunity that they have to do. Yeah, or there's no job. It's true. There's no job. So, God has called me. There's no job. Huh? 
Yeah, I am bishop. I don't know what to do next. I've finished school and I don't know what to do next. Can I work in the church? <laughs> it doesn't lead to any working in the church. God, God must call you. God must speak to you. You must obey God. God hasn't told you. Don't come. Don't come. You will not be blessed here. Do what God says. And you will be blessed. Amen. Lift your hand and just pray for the spirit of obedience to the Lord. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Father, we give you praise and thanks. In the name of Jesus. Trust and obey. For there's no other to be had in Jesus but to trust and Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. As every head is bowed, every eye closed, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ? Maybe somebody invited you. You want to say, Pastor, help me to know Jesus. Maybe as you stand here, you know you are far from God. Will you go to heaven or will you go to hell when you die? You don't really know. But tonight, you want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want Jesus to make me a new person. Please help me to know God tonight. I want all my sins to be washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. I want my name to be written in the book of life. If you are here like that, just lift up your right hand and I'm going to pray with you. Just lift it up high where you are standing. God bless you. Lift it up high. Pastor, pray with me. I want Jesus to come into my life. I want to be a new person. I want Jesus to save me tonight, today, right now, as you stand here. Lift it up. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lift it up high. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. If you've lifted up your hand, I want you to do one more thing. I want you to come, come from where you are standing, come from the back, come from the side, wherever you are. Come on, all the way. Jesus tonight. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. to be my blessed Savior. I surrender Lift up your hand, of those, of those, all those of you in front here. And everybody also lift your hand and say after me, Lord Jesus, yes, Lord. thank you for today. Thank you for today. Please forgive me for my sins. Forgive me my sins. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Today, today, I receive you I receive as my you. Savior yes. and my master. my master. Oh, God. Oh, God. I know oh, I am a sinner. Oh, God. Oh, God. I know I am a sinner. Have mercy on me, Lord. Please wash away my sins with your precious blood. From today, I receive Jesus as my master and my Lord. Oh God, please write my name in the book of life. From tonight, I belong to God. I belong to Jesus Christ and I will serve Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Say after me, listen carefully. 
from tonight, I will not serve you again. Satan, I will not follow you again. I belong to Jesus. And I will serve Jesus Christ. Lift your two and say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And I will serve you, Jesus, all the days of my life. I love you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Wow. God bless you all. What's your name, little girl? Pardon? Rodeline. Oh. God bless you today. You are born again. You are new Christians in Christ. Amen. Amen. And Jesus is with you. And Jesus is for you all the days of your life. Amen. God bless you. Please go with our pastor who is standing right here. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering for all these wonderful, wonderful Christians today. Oh, give the Lord a clap offering and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I now know how blessed people became blessed. Say all of them. All of them. Became blessed, became blessed in the same way. Same way. Now tell your neighbor, 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 I am going to ask you an important question. An important question. How did blessed people become blessed? What is the answer? Tell the person, 100% correct. You are blessed also in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We a powerful sermon. Amen. And as the Bible, do not be hearers only, but doers also. Amen. Amen. If we want to inherit the the promises and the blessings, we will do the same. Amen. And the God of heaven surely bless us. Amen. Amen. So we we get become blessed by being obedient, like Abraham, like being obedient by Isaac when he looked very stupid in, in Isaac's decision in particular. And like Jacob receiving a fatherly blessing, amen, receiving a fatherly blessing. And David just loving God, a man after God's own heart. And like prophet said, even with an if, a but, something problem, but God recognized him. I like the but, but about Judah. That Judah wasn't the best among the people. It just shows again the grace of God and the mercy of God that he actually slept with because the one who slept with the prostitute. Yeah. And this is the one who sold Joseph, who be, who be, but he was still chosen. May the Lord overlook our faults and our sins and bless us. Even when we don't deserve it, when we don't, may God look upon us and be faith, show us favor. Amen. And then last, by God, by God promise that if you do this, you do this. If you obey me, I'll do this. If you don't obey me, I'll do this. So it comes back to the same obedience. And like we learned, they were blessed. They are blessed. Because they give, amen. They are blessed because they give, amen. Yeah, the givers are blessed. And the ones who are unstrong don't get blessed, amen. But God is going to take us further and further and further, even as we follow, amen. And the blessings upon the church will become your blessings too, amen. This is not your end. You become blessed as you follow those who are blessed, amen. The examples that are ahead of you. Amen. We will not depart from what is written in the Bible. We will flow and we will receive the blessings from God. Somebody say me, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So thank you, Father, for this night's sermon again. I pray that it's not just an exercise of a Wednesday night meeting, but it's become real in our lives. And all these things that we are hearing and watching will be prophetic messages unto our lives. That like Isaac, like Jacob, like, like Judah, like, like the Jews, we will also be blessed, blessed and be a blessing to many people. You've done so much, and able to do much more. We are grateful. We thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, let's take another offering and give it to the Lord. Amen. Let's take another offering and give it to the Lord. Father, we give to you our offering tonight again. Bless it. 
and make it a blessing. And may we read from the blessing that we give to you. A hundredfold, a sixtyfold, thirtyfold. We've seen you bless and we know you can bless. Bless your people. Everyone that's given to you tonight again. We thank you, Jesus. And may your name be praised. And everything should be amen. 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 So God bless you all for coming along for this Wednesday night service. Tomorrow night, here to pray, amen. And let's see what God is going to do. I enjoyed the prayer last week. I don't know what it's going to be like next tomorrow, but God is going to bless us. Amen. And let's Amen. remind on the on the second good is with prophet, and in the night our own good watch uh, good Friday service here in Las Vegas on the Zoom. But on the Sunday we'll be going back. Albeit not everybody may be there, but we'll be meeting at church even with COVID principles in there. COVID. Um, rules and guidelines, amen, and God will bless us, amen. God hasn't finished with us yet. The beginning, I say, it's a restart, and uh, we are going to experience great things from the Lord, amen. And let's invite people for the services, invite people for good nights, for good Friday services, and the, the Easter Sunday service, and it is coming, Palm Sunday service, amen. The God of heaven will surely bless you and bless me, amen. Now may the Lord watch over you. May the Lord preserve you and may the Lord make a difference between you and them that don't save according to the scriptures. May that happen practically. We thank you, Jesus. Your word is true. And no word of yours come, goes, goes, goes out and goes forth in vain and comes back to you in vain without it being fulfilled. Lord, let that scripture, Malachi, come to pass in our lives. Mm-hmm. We shall see the difference between them that Save the Lord and them that don't save the Lord. Yes, Father, you know, let the daughters of the saints rejoice over us because of this. But they will even testify that these people are blessed. We give you thanks and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. So let's share the grace together as we go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the union, the fellowship, the contribution, the Holy Ghost. The 200 children, which includes all the important people of my life, and as a victory, the cancellation of curses, deaths, and deaths, and victory of coronavirus and Corona Plus, be with us now for more. Amen. God bless. Amen. And have a great, great night. Amen. Be blessed and be safe in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen.